and uh, this is uh, another part of our how-to guide on how to make a small shunting layout and uh, we're discussing in this part of the video about the oil terminal. Uh, now an oil terminal is always a good thing to add to a model railway because it gives you scope to run a lot of tanker wagons uh, which gives you some variety to your rolling stock but they're also great fun to model because they've got loads of pipes and stuff going everywhere and I did stick one of these into Grove Street Yard. Now this is based on a facility that was in Trafford Park. Uh, the remnants of it are still there. I couldn't tell you the name of the road without looking at a map. Um, but it's quite interesting if you go there because uh, the, the tracks going into it are still all there. And you can see where the unloading gantries were. Here on Grove Street Yard, uh, what we've focused on uh, building this terminal around is the Ratio Oil Depot Kit. Um, now, I managed to get two of these through a variety of sources. One complete set was stripped off a, a layout that was being dismantled, and the other one I just found it in a box. I'm not even sure that I remember buying it, but uh, it was there and I thought, well, let's, let's make good use of it. What we've done with one of these is taken one of the little huts. We've built it up as per the kit. On this, what we've done is we've employed a lot of good techniques for building uh, embossed plastic uh, building kits. The actual brickwork on this was uh, highlighted using some uh, Derwent Artists watercolour pencils in various shades of greens and blacks and browns. And then we gave the mortar a wash with very, very thin down white acrylic paint. It's a great method this because uh, the, the thin down paint flows into all the brick courses and gives you a really good rendition of mortar. Uh, well, we've used that there as uh, the focal point in this depot, along with some of these oil tanks. But behind them, we've built a representation of some of the oil unloading facility. Now, some of these facilities would have had overhead walkways and pipe works, but that's quite complicated. It's prone to get damaged, and uh, we didn't really have the bits for it. So what I've gone for is a below ground level uh, system. And we can see here, we've got the parts from the Ratio Oil Depot kit down the middle there. On just plastic card as the base, it's all painted up to look a bit like concrete. Now we've kept the track work fairly neat in here because if you actually look at a lot of these industrial facilities, they do tend to be quite well kept. Um, even in some cases, long after the rail traffic has ceased. Um, I remember going to a plant in Billingham in Middlesbrough and there's an oil terminal in there. And the track looks like they've got a gardener who goes around and weeds it all, even though it quite clearly hasn't seen a train in some time. We've made the sidings big enough to hold four of the Backman TTA tank wagons. Uh, you can also use other tank wagons in here. By nature of the sizings, we should be able to also fit in a Backman Bogey TEA oil tank wagon as well. Uh, we've built up a little occupation gate here on the entry to the facility. Uh, which is something that you would see on a lot of these, uh, really to demark the uh, point that uh, railway land becomes the private factory siding. We used a Wills level crossing kit to um, put this together and cut the little target there that you see in the red just out of plastic card and uh, using a compass to get the circle right, cut it out carefully and glue it on there. Now the pipework on the building is all made from bits of the sprues. Sprues offer a great source of free modelling uh, material. We've touched on this in the Scratch Building a Model Railway Yard Lamp video which we did uh, a little while ago but here we've used it to represent the pipework. Now if you want to bend the sprue uh, in a way that it wasn't naturally in on the actual kit what we use is, well what I use is a cigarette lighter and you play the flame close but not onto the plastic because you don't want to actually set fire to it but just enough that the heat softens it. You could also use a soldering iron for this but again don't let the sprue touch the soldering iron otherwise it will just turn into a gloopy mess and will probably ruin your soldering iron as well. Once the plastic has begun to soften you can then gently bend it to the shape you want and then let it cool. It cools quite quickly and it will then hold that shape and then we've painted all that up and we've glued it to the buildings and the walls using uh, an impact adhesive, in this case Bostic. The building at the back is again just an offcut of the same plywood material that we used to build the baseboard. Uh, again, you can go back and watch the video where we talked a little bit about the baseboard construction. 
Uh, this is screwed at an angle to the back seam. This again breaks up the symmetry. So what you don't want is everything at nice and neat 90 degree angles. So this goes from the back seam and uh, comes out about an inch in the corner. And this helps disguise some of the structural strengthening that holds the back seam together and gives it strength. Now you can see at the top uh, above the roof that strengthener in the corner there we've actually covered with super quick brick paper and decorated it with some offcut uh, roofing strips from some of the Metcalf buildings that we had left over. This makes it look like an industrial chimney and hides the fact that it's actually just a part of your baseboard. It's quite effective to try and think outside the box with things like this and hide things that would otherwise perhaps jar with the transition across the scenic part of the layout. The actual curvature of the roof I used by finding a circular object of the of approximately the right size and just drew round it and then cut out with a jigsaw. In this case I actually used the lid off a small dustbin that my father had in his workshop. Just drew around the radius, cut it out and then I used a lot of scrap parts here from an old Builder Plus. Uh, engine shed kit to give a representation of something like uh, corrugated iron and it all comes together pretty reasonably there I think. Uh, the ballasting as I said before is done quite neat and we tried to be a bit more sparing with the grass um, to make this look a little bit more well kept. Uh, the building in the background the main bulk of it at the bottom that sticks out was built for another layout that was uh, subsequently scrapped but I felt this building was too good to just throw away so it kind of got transplanted as is. The uh, bits and pieces on top giving representation of pipe work and other industrial fittings are just leftover bits of old Airfix kits. I think there's actually the hanger there off uh, an Airfix HMS Suffolk kit uh, but you wouldn't really know to look at it unless somebody told you and there's uh, some of the pipe fittings came from the RAF uh, recovery set uh, which um, the bulk of it is actually in the scrapyard. But all of these painted up, glued in, any old wear, really do make quite an effective array of industrial fittings. And what you're really trying to do is to give it that kind of random uh, business-like air to make it look like a real industrial premises and not just little boxes that have been placed conveniently on the layout. Most of these buildings are no more than maybe half an inch to an inch thick. And this makes best use of the fact that we haven't actually got a lot of space on this layout. But we want to give the illusion that these buildings go back a lot further. Uh, and having these small bits jutting out just helps to give that real sense of depth and bulk to these buildings. Anyway, that's uh, the oil terminal on Grove Street Yard, kind of uh, in a short video there. I hope it gives you some good inspiration. Don't forget to share this video. Uh, if you feel that there's somebody out there who would benefit from seeing this and tickle that like button. Now this like button is a demanding soul and it does like being tickled and every time you tickle it I get a sweetie and uh, a Labour politician gets found out for an expenses scandal or something like that. I don't know, make it up, do something fun. Anyway, you take very good care of yourself and this is me Jenny Kirk saying Glad to have you along for the ride and bye for now. And we've used a, um, uh, we used a, uh, what did I, what did I use?